Hello my soccer universe, let's review La Liga, but before I go into it and also wardrobe choice and whatsoever, um, thank you very much for your birthday greetings, yes I said it already in the Serie A, in, in the German Austrian Cup review, but uh, I know though not everyone's watching, so thank you very very much again. Also, this will be now the last review video um, for the midweek. Um, I was almost about thinking, yeah, maybe Manchester City getting eliminated from the League Cup could be something to talk about and make a video about because it seems kind of a big moment, but then I really want to ignore this League Cup. I just heard about it and that was that. So, uh, yes, four-time defending champions eliminated will not be part of a video. And similarly, um, I will not. I saw highlights of um, Nice against Marseille, the makeup game in League uh, But for a single game, I will not make an entirely <laughs> entire review video, though you will get it in the stats cast, uh, which will come right after this video as well. La Liga. I'm wearing Barcelona. Barcelona is the biggest loser, so I'm going against my rule. And yeah, I'm again shunning uh, what is at the moment probably one of my favorite teams to watch in La Liga. It would deserve a whole law, law the Grand Real Sociedad. But honestly, I think we will talk about Barcelona the most here because uh, it's similar to what I did uh, um, early in the week with the. Uh, Germany, we have uh, talked a lot about Lusk and was wearing a Lusk jersey. I think we will need to talk about Barcelona because this is the biggest story in La Liga. Despite it being probably one of the closest leagues in Europe at this uh, very moment, uh, it seems in many, many, many ways that this league could go either way. But then if you look at it on the face of it, you know, with everyone dropping points when I, uh, and so on and seeing things, it also seems a little bit like it's Real Madrid's to lose. Could there be one of the upstarts that are not uh, Atletico Madrid or Barcelona? Could any one of those catch Real Madrid? We have to see at the moment. Uh, and that's a little bit, a bit, a bit of a spoiler. It, uh, my model still sees Real Madrid as a huge favorite with over 65% chance of winning this league and only Atletico coming close. Um, let's uh, look at the, re the, the, the the result. I mean, the first eye-catching result is the 3-3 between uh, Villarreal and Cadiz. And again, Villarreal cannot find a win. And uh, you see uh, Villarreal is here more on the loser side so of teams that are actually uh, dropping points in the expected standings. So that is uh, a little bit disappointing. Also, uh, Sevilla only managing a 1-1 at Mallorca is also not the greatest of results, especially after this great win on the weekend, uh, um, uh, the 5-3 was against Levante, I think. Uh, and now uh, only 1-1 one, one at Sevilla, at Mallorca. However, you know, points, points, points. The big story of uh, what was my birthday <laughs> was, and I actually watched, if you see my, uh, uh, my unpacking video, you see that I'm watching a little bit of Barcelona uh, playing at Rayo is and i cannot put it in any other way um Radamel falcao putting ronald kuman out of his misery uh it was the last straw um yes barcelona missed tons of chances and it's definitely not ronald kuman's fault that you cannot walk uh the chances into the net which is so reminiscent of what is lusk currently doing uh i also gotta say but uh, namely then missing a pen penalty i think Serginho dest had another big one uh even at the end i really thought that barcelona will still get this equalizer because they had all those chances however i don't want to take anything away from rayo who just took the chances that they had with radamel Falcao scoring uh the winner already in the 30th minute and now losing against a newly promoted team, although one has to say a one that is playing exceptionally well these days. Um, that has also an exceptionally, and I can repeat, exceptionally great looking jer jersey. This Rayo home is on my uh, one and a half list for sure. So uh, they get the win and it's just within hours of that Ronald Koeman is sacked. And there was even the statement then put uh, put out. Yeah, he can say goodbye to the team uh, the next day. Which yeah, very 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 nice. 
to me it seems it seems just a little bit amateurish because I mean just you yes you had the classical loss and, and so but it does not seem to be the right moment to fire your coach it just doesn't uh, yes um, you got with Sergi in a, uh, a stance a standing and I think I I was thinking about it. I mean in, in Spain we know this uh, the latest man Santi Solari took over Real Madrid uh, you have a standing coach that uh, can be an interim uh, four for four while until you have a new coach and of course they go directly for Xavi Hernandez who yes he, like Kuman, but much more recent is a club le- legend probably the best Spanish player of all time and in the Qatari league he is mixing it up I mean he is showing great things there but it's the Qatari league this seems to be such a, a also I you know being a Milan fan I have seen it too often when you know uh, after um, they got rid of Allegri, all the club legends took over the club uh, with Sedov, which I still think is probably a bright man who uh, I loved when he was a co conquer commentator. But maybe he's not made for the job. Who could be? But I think he took this Milan job too early. Same with Filippo Inzaghi. Fortunately, his career got re-resurrected. He went to the lower leagues and had some success there. Um, I'm also thinking, you know, uh, Gattuso, he did a decent job, but I think it came too early. Don't go with the club legends, especially if they're just, as, don't have the first coaching job, be a Barcelona coach. You will not hit lightning. Uh, uh, lightning will not strike twice, I should say that way. Uh, as with Guardiola, I just don't see it. I mean, the one thing is that Barcelona, unlike uh, Milan or let's say Manchester United, also have with uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a uh, similar trouble. The one thing is that Barcelona's style is kind of identifiable. Maybe Xavi can get back there, but I personally think it is time to go a little bit you know go interim now maybe swallow the pill let Xavi get uh, to El Sad maybe let him take even a different job before you have him at Barcelona he heck Guardiola did Barcelona B first I mean give him that job don't give him the head coaching job in one of the most difficult situations in the club's history yes I think the future is not as dark for Bar- Barcelona, but they're not quite there yet. So I have I have a strong feeling that you should go. You know, even if you go with uh, what's um, Martinez from Belgium, I know he has no lobby, but he's a little bit more experienced. I think if he would, I mean, it, it in many ways, yes, he's. I, I think he is even from Bar- 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 Barcelona. In many cases, uh, I think he would have an equally hard job, but at least um, I think he has a clear tactical identity and he is a veteran coach that could maybe take the squad until the end of the year. And then that's that, which is also a problem because I think Martinez probably wants to see Belgium at the World Cup. I got that feeling too. So, but you know, Barcelona is Barcelona. It's the job of, 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 of a life. In my opinion, Kuman never should have taken the Barcelona job. I understand why he took it because when you offer Bar Barcelona, you don't refuse it because it's a team. Uh, you know he had his best years of his career at Barcelona. He's a legend there. Uh, however, this was a suicide mission from the beginning, uh, and he did such an admirable job with the Dutch national team that, in a way, he ruined both uh, the Dutch national team's chances at Euro 2020 as well as I think. Barcelona threw away the title last season. Let's put it that way. Yes, Atleti had the big lead, but come late, come uh, early April, I really had the feeling that it's Barcelona's to lose at this moment because they really had caught up and they had something going. And uh, for some reason, I mean, I remember this Levante game uh, where he made a tactical tac- tac- sub- substitution. You can point to, to, to that one. I literally, I, literally, I literally think that with a more veteran manager or a better manager than Ronald Koeman, who I think is a decent manager, is not a great manager, um, I, I, I actually think Barca would have won the title this season. They won the title. Let's see how it will go this season. So, I mean, these are all, I, I'm saying I talked, I'm talking a lot about Barcelona, but these are just thoughts that come to my mind. And I actually think Barcelona is about to make the next big mistake. 
uh, you gotta come off your high horse and say, you know, that season is done. This is a transition season. Yes, we don't want to state it publicly, but it's all right if we don't win anything. We have a good core. Let's build something. Let's get through 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 the season. Maybe the goal is not tall top four, which is entirely possible. The way that the Spanish league is kind of even, uh, it is not a done deal. And even if we have one season out of the Champions League, it's not the end of the world. Yes, we need money, but now we need to kind of let's get on a solid footing, not have uh, success pull everything down uh, but yeah smarter minds you know I'm not Barcelona pre president or, or, or so, so who am I to talk um, other remarkable results of course Betis 4-1 over Valencia Betis is really on a roll so uh, the other uh, big team that has done there Borja Iglesias scoring two um, and Petzel and Juanmi Adding two more in the second half, uh, Betty seemingly can get it to together. I don't. I think they're in a ca ca category with Real Sociedad of being very watchable teams. Valencia maybe a little bit on the down, uh, but but I don't see either one of those going really into the top four. Another kind of disappointing is Real Madrid only nil nil against Osasuna, but this is what's uh, kind of. You know, Real Madrid won great, won good result, won so and so, so and so. But you kind of, you like the hamster. You get a little points here and here and there, and you're not really um, being outclassed in any way. Real Sociedad, though, keep on winning despite being depleted squad, injuries, and so on and so forth. Uh, they are a team that one cannot praise highly enough. Uh, the goals came late in a matchup of teams that I actually do like a lot in Spain. Celta Vigo, yeah, it's another team that I need to add. Um, it is Isaac and it is Elus Tondo who scored the goals. And uh, Real Sociedad is still top of the table. Um, and then Levante managed a 2-2 against Atletico Madrid. I think Levante still have not really won this season yes they are still there, but they have six draws and draws against real madrid and now again uh, one against Atlet atletico madrid although one has to be said um two penalties uh through bardi give them twice the equal as after griezmann gave them the lead and i think then um uh, Cunha scores his first goal for Atlet atletico madrid both penalties were kind of so and so uh, where VAR intervened, I think especially the second, the second one seemed to be a little bit nitpicky. Uh, the first one was totally deserved because Levante gave it their all against Atletico Madrid, but I think then in the end Atletico Madrid looked to be the stronger team and they should have probably won, but yeah, 2-2 two -two and Levante again. Uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of fun, but I think they gotta pick up the wins against the lower teams because against the big teams they seemingly show that they are made of uh, something, so... We gotta see. Um, just quickly at the weekend round, we have a derby de la Comunidad between Valencia and Villarreal, which I honestly have to say, it kind of, it's it's a it's a derby of two strikes, struggling teams. Atletico Madrid against Betis seems to be a very entertaining matchup, and then we have of course the Basque derby between Real Sociedad and, and Bilbao, so that is also one to look forward to. So that it is. That's it from me for the midweek. Um, please drop a line below if you want to add anything, especially Barcelona talk. But anything else in in the league, as I said, I focus maybe too heavily on Barcelona. And, uh, it's also not fair, especially when we see teams like Betis and Real Sociedad uh, doing great things. Any case, give me a thumbs up to if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!